be here. Good to celebrate. Good to give God the glory for the great things he has done. To all of these um, pastors and preachers who join us here in the pulpit, uh, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and in creation, um, and certainly most of all to the honoree today, uh, 50 years serving the Lord in ministry, Pastor Isa. Uh, it's good to be here. Good to be here. It's truly a blessing and a privilege that the Lord has so fixed it that uh, we could be here to celebrate on this wonderful day. Amen. Amen. Um, now all of these pastors and preachers, all of these brothers who are exceptional preachers um, that uh, Pastor Isom would uh, call on me. He could have gotten it, folks from all over the country to come and to do this. And uh, he called on me. What a wonderful privilege it is. Deeply honored and humbled um, that he would call on us for this task. I'm just going to say this right off. We, we, we thank God for a pastor of this church and Pastor Paige. Amen. Amen. Who um, the Lord has uh, blessed with wisdom beyond his years that he would uh, choose to honor this man of God yeah. in this occasion. This is uncommon that a pastor uh, of his, uh, his age would look to honor someone who has gone on before to set the stage and to set the path for those of us who come behind. And I want to thank Pastor Page. I want to bless the Lord for him today. Yes, amen. Amen. Time when so many are, are uh, looking to for self-grandizement to lift themselves up, and he would turn and uh, pay honor to another uh, who has served faithfully. Amen. I'm just gonna say this, and then I'm gonna ask that you would um, turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter four. Um, we we did look at your at the theme, and um, you had an opportunity to do a double honor a few minutes ago when the offering was was lifted. Amen. Because uh, word honor is where we get our word honorarium from. And so you had a chance to give him a double honor, and I hope you did uh, the best that you could to bless the man of God. But I just want to announce that um, uh, we do bring you greetings from the Greater New Home Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, of the Lord Ninth Ward of the city. Amen. And I want you to know that um, the temperature is 87 degrees. <laughs> partly cloudy. Amen. Which is also partly sunny. And 87. Amen. That's one to let you know. Amen. So you're welcome to come anytime. Amen. You want to get away from snow. Lord have mercy. In October the 14th. Amen. Second Corinthians, uh, we're going to do what the Lord called us to do and, and what Pastor Isa asked us to do. Second Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm just going to read a few verses from that chapter. Amen. Just, just a few verses. The pastor said, the pastor told me, take your time. You didn't come all this way not to take your time and preach. Amen. But we, we, we want to take our time, but by the same token, we know a lot of folks have been here a long time. Amen. And so we want, to, we want to do what the Lord called us to do. Amen. As expeditiously as we can do. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm going to begin reading with verse number 5. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. I pray that whatever Bible you have with you, that you would read silently with us as we read out loud in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 beginning with verse number 5. If you're there say amen. amen. This is what the text says. For what we preach is not ourselves 
but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Then verse 7 says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Can I read that again? But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. If the Lord will allow, the Spirit will allow, we want to talk to you from the subject. Heavenly treasure in cracked containers. Heavenly treasure in cracked containers. Heavenly treasure in cracked containers. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for this worship experience. Thank you for this celebration. Thank you for this preacher, this pastor, this leader that you have chosen to honor today. Thank you for everyone who's already been part of the worship experience. Those that you have used to bless our hearts and to celebrate your servant. Now, Lord, we thank you for another privilege to worship in your word. We humbly submit that we're nothing without you, can do nothing without you, except you use us to speak to your people. Use us today to your glory and to your honor. We pray that you let the words of my mouth meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are strengthening our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. And every heart say, Amen. 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 Heavenly treasure in cracked containers. The Apostle Paul is the writer of our text. He holds up this beautiful image. This wonderful metaphor concerning treasure in earthenware vessels. Paul is alluding to this expensive, this extraordinarily valuable treasure that God chooses to position in cracked containers. That's what an earthen vessel is. An earthen vessel is something that's so fragile, that's so flimsy and delicate uh -huh. that it doesn't take much to break it. Right. And this is the place where God deposits his treasure. Well, well, well. You see it when Jesus selects the men who would follow after him, his disciples, when he chooses men who would ultimately change the whole world around. We see it in the kind of people that he chose. He chose James and John, so-called sons of thunder. And they are called the sons of thunder because of their anger management problem. Oh, Are y'all going to pray with them? They had issues with hot tempers. But God chooses them to deposit his heavenly treasure. We see it in the apostle Peter who out of one side of his mouth say, Lord, I don't know about the rest of these jokers who hanging around here, but I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. But then on the other side of his mouth, he denied Jesus three times in the same night. But God chose this vessel 
to deposit his heavenly treasure. We see it in tongues. We, we call him doubting tongues because he's so divided in his position toward Jesus that, that we don't even know if he has basic faith. But God chooses him to deposit this treasure. Are y'all going to pray with me? He, he graciously chooses these cracked vessels, these cracked containers to deposit this wonderful treasure that God has given to the world. Uh, 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 perhaps you're like me. I, 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 when I look at these brothers, I, I start to get encouraged, Pastor, that if God could use them, then that's a chance for me. Are oh, y'all gonna pray for me? Because, because, because truth be told, for a long time I wrestled and I struggled with the idea that God could use a crack container like me. So long to accept my call because I just couldn't believe that somebody that was so weak and so flimsy uh, could be trusted to carry the treasure of heaven to change men and women's souls, amen, for the glory and for the purpose of God. I wrestled with it, I wrestled with that he could use a container that was bruised and scarred and broken. Now, how could I be strong enough to contain and to hold this wonderful treasure? Right. But after a while of serving God and serving his people, I started to realize that maybe I wasn't weak enough. Because right. the Apostle Paul said that his strength is made perfect. I wish I had somebody pray. In my weakness, his grace is sufficient. So we have this treasure, this gift of preaching and this gift of teaching, this gift of missionary work and this gift of evangelism and this gift of leadership and this gift of pastoring God's people. But we have it in crack the tanks. Pastor Isaac's got that. Put your finger on it's but there's something special about it you 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 can't articulate exactly what it is but it's something that separates him from a lot of other people you know yeah it, 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 it's what allows him to humble himself and to serve one congregation for almost 40 years most of the time having to do everything himself you got to the church and turn the heat on the church and turn the air condition on the church and, 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 and open the Sunday school and teach the Sunday school and then do the devotion and then raise the offering and, and then get up and preach to God's people. It's something special about somebody who can do that for almost 40 years. It's, it's the heavenly treasure in the crack Contain. We have this treasure. Well, preacher, what what is the treasure? How 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 do you how do you qualify it? How do you quantify it? Well, the apostle Paul tells us what the treasure is, and he he, he says that the treasure. He talks about it in in verse six. He he says it's the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The image is that when when not like today, but maybe in New Orleans, when you look up in the sky and, and it's a clear day and there are no obstructions and you can almost see into the heavens when you look. And, and when you look, this is the illustration, you see the face of Jesus smiling down on you. That's the treasure. That's, that's the image that he gives us. He says, that's the treasure. The treasure is the knowledge of the glory of God shining in the face of Jesus Christ. It breaks into your life. It, it invades your space. I wish I had a witness. And, and because it comes into your life and your space, you'll never be the same again. That's the treasure. Now, now you run when nobody's chasing you. Now you cry when ain't nothing to cry 
crying about. Now, you shout when everybody else is, is crying. I wish I had a witness in here. That's the treasure that Paul is talking about. You, you know what treasure is. The, the Apostle Paul knew what it was because he met that treasure on the Damascus Road. Yeah. Yeah. He was on his way to stop the movement of the church. He was on his way to persecute the church. And he met the treasure. Oh, what's that? Are y'all gonna pray with me? And that's what I believe I am. 
containers. In crack containers, we're fragile, we're breakable, and this is where God chooses to place his treasure. He does it all the time. Not somewhere else. He deposited it in you and me. Here's the reason that he does it, and I'm done. The reason is to show that all the surpassing power comes from God and not from us. Can I say that again? That the all surpassing power comes from God. My wife understands this. Comes from God and not from us. Are y'all praying with me? That all surpassing power that God chooses uh, to display on a canvas that's weak and broken. This bless me, this bless me. He, he chooses a canvas uh, to convey this wonderful blessing, uh, this wonderful treasure, so that you will know that it's not me, it's the God in me. It's not me, it's the Jesus. It's the Jesus in me. That's what makes the preacher special. That's what makes the pastor worthy of double honor. That's what keeps us in the whelming flood. That's what holds you when the storms of life are blowing. That's what keeps you going when folks are smiling in your face and stabbing you in the back. That's what holds you steady in the realm and flood and difficulty. It's because he keeps me with the treasure that he's placed in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want to move too fast, but I want to share with you that this all-surpassing power, uh, God decides to display it on a canvas that 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 helps his treasure to come forward. I was ahead of it. He wants you to be able to see it on a canvas where he gets the glory for the good things that he has done. Uh, uh, I, I, I was trying to figure out how to share this with you. And, uh, and many years ago, uh, my, my, my wife and I been together 35 years, going on 36. And during those years, we've had some ups and downs. And there were some times when if I had some money, I would have done some more to express my love. And, and I went to a jewelry store years ago because I thought I had more than I thought I had. And, and, and I went there to pick out a, a, a diamond because I wanted to get a ring for her. And, and the lady said, listen, we're going to show you some diamonds, uh, but they're not, they're not already fitted. They're not already put in, in the ring. Do you need to pick the diamond that you want? And that was before she told me how much they cost. And, and she pulled the diamonds out. There was, there was a whole uh, a bag full of them. And she poured them on this white canvas. And she began to explain. She said, don't you see the brilliance in the diamonds? And I, I don't know nothing about no diamond. I, I, I couldn't see the brilliance, to tell you the truth. And, and she, I told her, I, I wasn't trying to fake it. I said, I don't see it. And she said, oh, okay, I know why you don't see the brilliance. But then she picked up the diamonds and she moved the white canvas that she had them on and she put a black canvas down. And she put the black canvas down, poured the diamonds on the black canvas, and even a, a ignorant wretch like me could see the brilliance. And the reason I could see it is because the diamonds were displayed on a top. And, and that's what God does with us. He wants you to see his brilliance. And so he places his treasure on black canvas. Oh God, don't hear me. He does it in black. 
Try to pay. 